Hello, what do you know about IgA deficiency? Do you know that this is an immune system disease? It's one of the branches of immune system pathology. You see, I've drawn six branches of immune system pathology, which is covering pretty much everything you have to know about it. But the IgA is part of an immunodeficiency. So first of all, what is immunodeficiency? Let's define it here. It's defined as a quantitative or qualitative defect of some cells. Which type of cells? The lymphocytes, like T and B lymphocytes, which is an acquired immunity. Or you have defect of the phagocytic cells or the complement mediated system. So the quantitative standing for that, we have a reduced number of these cells. Or the qualitative meaning that the quality, the function of these cells are bad. So now that we have a defect, we will have an increased susceptibility to infection or lymphoproliferative diseases. Let's uh, categorize immunodeficiency. We can categorize it into primary or secondary. What's the difference between these two? You see that primary is a genetic deficiency where it's inherited in the family. The secondary is an acquired deficiency, which is caused by other things like drugs, infection, malnutrition, autoimmunity, and so on. An example of acquired deficiency is AIDS here, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So, but now we are not concerned with the secondary one. We are concerned with the primary one, and especially we are concerned with IgA deficiency, which is a B cell defect, because you can categorize primary into B cell or T cell or some other types. IgA deficiency is a B cell defect. So let's turn now and dig in here. This is what you have to know. These are the pictures and some keywords. So we go straight to the point. What, what's functioning bad here is that we have a maturation stop. So we have an impaired maturation of the B lymphocytes, as we said. And we have to locate the B lymphocytes here. You see, this is the bone marrow in blue. So we have taken some cells from the bone marrow here, which is the pluripotent stem cell, and that is giving rise to common lymphoid progenitor cells or the myeloid stem cells. And today we are concerned with this common lymphoid progenitor cells. You see, this cell can give rise to B cells or T cells. T cells in the thymus and the B cells in the bone marrow. So in the bone marrow, you will get pro-B cells, pre-B cells, and then these pre-B cells will go out to the peripheral sites like the blood, and there you will have them yeah then there they will mature into immature b cells mature ones and then into plasma cells so what's the problem here the problem is that the iga deficiency is blocking this step between immature b cell and mature b cell so you see the iga part is blocked the other ones igg and ige and the other immunoglobulins they are normal, so they have a normal amount. So now that we have a low amount of IgA, you will be see, seeing that we have a weakened mucosal defense. Why? Because we have IgA in the mucosa. What is mucosa? You have them in the respiratory tract, in the gastrointestinal tract, in the urogenital tract, and that's lining these tracts. And IgA is defending that tract from intruders. So now we have a weekend mucosa, so we can see either symptoms or patients will be, in the majority of cases, asymptomatic. But in some patients, you can see some symptoms, and these are the symptoms which can be seen. For example, if you get a blood transfusion, so you get foreign blood into your body, then that foreign antigen, IgA, will be causing an anaphylactic reaction. Why? Because we don't have IgA in, a, in our body, so this will be treated as a foreign intruder by our immune system. So you can get a fatal anaphylactic reaction which can cause death. As you see, this poor boy have edema around the eyes, edema around the mouth. It have, it, he have some reddish purpura, which is meaning that we, he have a lot of blood vessels a lot of blood under the skin here and this is a fatal condition we can also see some collagen vascular disorders 
meaning that this is an autoimmune disorder where you have systemic lupus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis being the most important in IJ deficiency here. Uh, there are some other types here. And there are some other symptoms. We can see conjunctivitis. Here you see conjunctivitis. Otitis media. Here you see pus filled in the middle ear cavity. And in the urogenital tract, we will see infection. This is, these are the urogenital tract. You see kidney and uh, ureter and so on, urethra. And you can also see infection in the gastrointestinal tract, in the respiratory tract, since all these places have mucosa where you usually have IgA. So in our case now, we don't have IgA, so all this can be infected. And in the gastrointestinal tract, you can see some specific infections or inflammations uh, like chronic diarrhea, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, celiac disease. And these are the typical places where you can see this in Crohn's disease. You see there are skipped lesions in the ileum and colon. And in the ulcerative colitis, for example, this is continuous infection, inflammation. And then you have celiac disease also. And in the respiratory tract, you can see sinusitis. So uh, this is meaning that we have infection in the paranasal sinuses. Here you can see they are colored here. These are air cavities in the bone and this is infected. You can see bronchitis in the lung here. Uh, so the bronchus is in, in, infected or pneumonia or so you can see allergy in the respiratory tract. So these are the symptoms. If you turn now uh, what the cause is, I mean what what is causing this? It can be a familial one, so meaning it's an acquired, it's a genetic one, uh, where you have autosomal dominant or recessive disease. We are not quite sure. It can be either of these, and the genetic counseling is important before you have a child, since uh, you can the child can get this disease, and you can also appreciate that we have acquired ones. Uh, researchers have shown that some acquired diseases like toxoplasmosis or viral infection like measles or drug exposure like phenytoin or, or penicillamine, uh, these can cause IgA deficiency in, in very rare cases, but it can. And in chromosome 18 deletion also, so you delete the chromosome 18, uh, a part of it. Uh, so uh, how can we measure this in the lab then? We have a quantitative nephelometry, it's called. So it's a nephelometer. This is the nephelometer, which is measuring the total amount of the immunoglobulins. And you see, first you take blood from the patient, and then you put this blood into these two, into this bottle. And then you will have a laser beam, which is going through here. And if you have IgA, this blackish one, this, the particles in this solution, then the light will be scattered. If you don't have this, then the light will go through. So first of all, it's scattered here at this point, but then you have a square. And in the square, this light will be scattered even more. And that is causing that some of the light will enter a photodetector. This is a de detector here. And that can then... Uh, communicate with a computer and then you analyze this and you will get that where you have either you have IGA or not. And here you see the detector is detecting nothing. So you will, you will get no signal. And these are the levels in different laboratories. There are different values, but here you can see that the lower limit of IgA being 100 milligram per deciliter. So if you have lower than 100, then you have an IgA deficiency. And here you see IgA, it's a dimer. So this is an antibody and it's a dimer. Here you see IgM is a different, it's a pentamer. And here you have a monomer for the others. So now we have measured the total amount of immunoglobulins, but we can measure with an electrophoresis also to measure the subclass of it. You rem do you remember that I said that IgG2 or IgG4, which is a subclass of IgG, if you have this together, if you have a deficiency in this together with a deficiency in IgA, 
then you are particularly prone to infection. And this is an electrophoresis here, which is showing you the bands. These are the blue bands. And you see albumin is the strongest, strongest here, and therefore it has the strongest reaction in the band here also. And we are not concerned with this beta, alpha, or albumin. We are concerned with the gamma ones because the immunoglobulins are gamma globulins. So here you see the level of the gamma globulins are decreased. And you can see it here too. You don't see this bluish color, which is usually there when you have gamma globulins. So now we see that we have a reduced number of immunoglobulins or gamma globulins. What's the treat treatment? Uh, there's no treatment, unfortunately, uh, but you can treat the infections, which we saw in the symptom part. So you treat it with antibiotics. And some patients will typically recover with time since they will have a tendency to increase the amount of IgA for some reason, uh, but some patients will not. So you have to treat, treat it with antibiotics. And if we do a summary now, what's the main message for IgA deficiency? It's the message that we have a blocked maturation of the B lymphocytes and we block it between immature B cell and mature B cell. And then we will get the low IgA with weakened mucosal defenses and the majority of the patients will then be asymptomatic, but some patients can have symptoms like these ones anaphylactic reactions if you have blood transfusion or if they have a low IgG2 or IgG4 then they are particularly prone to infections. Which type of infections? Infections of the respiratory tract, the gastrointestinal tract, the urogenital tract. You can get otitis media or conjunctivitis or you can even get autoimmune diseases like collagen vascular disorders and especially the systemic lupus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis. And these are the sub-branches of these specific infections. How did we measure it? We took blood, we put it into nephilometer, uh, nephilometer and we quantitatively measured the amount of the immunoglobulins. We saw that it was lower than 100 milligram per deciliter. We measured the subclass of, for example, IgG2, uh, and then we uh, got the impression that these patients have an increased susceptibility to infection. We use, we use the electrophoresis to measure that one. And the cause were that we had either a dominant or recessive autosomal disease. So it's preferable that you have a counseling, genetic counseling, if you want to have a child. There are some acquired causes like these ones, which researchers have found in rare cases. And that's it. And if you want to appreciate the big picture, then you see that IgA deficiency, we're defecting B cell maturation, which is a part of the primary immunodeficiencies. And the immunodeficiency is then one branch of the total immune system pathology. And thank you very much.